It's your boy Dolphin Dawood, the last Muslim podcast we hear swerving on Sunday. I got your boy Walid Naeem, author of the Flat Earth Manifesto. We talking extraterrestrials, out of space, Earth, and conspiracy theories. It's definitely going down. I'm excited for this guest. I'm excited to make this thing happen. I, I'm, I'm super excited. You know, I've been a Muslim for, I want to say all my life, really. But I really didn't start studying the scripture and the, doc, and the doctrine with a, a full study and a full submission until approximately like 2015, 2016. And over that time, I've been able to like come out, come out with, uh, I've come to different conclusions than what I was taught in school as far as, uh, as far as like how uh, things work on the planet, as far as how the, even just like how they taught us with the solar system, how they taught us with uh, just different aspects in the, it, with, with, with our society's education system. I've, I've come to, I've come at odds with it just due to the fact of the matter that it doesn't line up along with the word, with the scriptures, with the previous scriptures, and it doesn't line up with logic. If you really logically, truly pay attention to nature, and the way things are really going on in nature, what they're saying and what's really happening is two different things. And as long as people say, hey, I'm going to go with the these, these so-called scientists, the doctors, the so-called scholars, uh, man, it is, uh, you know, people are going to be consistently misled. And I think the misled, the misleading is, is purposeful and it's to keep people subservient because when people don't know the truth, they have nothing to stand on. And the only thing that they can really stand on is, uh, is bs it's not a solid foundation and when that storm comes and that heavy rain comes it knocks that sand out from under their foundation and that foundation crawl i mean crumbles and and that's what you see is happening with our societies the societies are crumbling from the very foundations due to all the mass bs that's been put out there and so hey i'm here today dropping that hawk i got brother walid naeem on with us brother walid what's going on how you doing today brother It's uh, actually excellent weather where I am, and I'm just uh, enjoying the blessings of God. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man. Man, yo, so you done wrote, so you wrote a manifesto, the Flat Earth Manifesto, man. You know you're going to get a lot of people going to be like, huh? A lot of people are going to just throw it behind their backs, but you know what? You got a brother right here that's paying attention to every word that you're saying because I know, personally, I know that you want to hawk, and I know that you walk in that right path, and look. You, I got your back. I'm paying attention to what you're saying, man. First question I got for you, bro. How long have you been a Muslim? Me? Well, I have been submitted to God all my life. If we use a true definition of the word, a Muslim is just somebody who submits to the Lord. However, you know, because I've, I've always had an inclination towards God. I've always wanted to follow his words and his truth. And I've always been inclined towards the truth. And just I knew that God existed since I was a child. From the moment I was a kid and I was able to have rational, complicated thoughts, I always knew that there was a God, and atheism always seemed foolish to me. However, I, I'm 20 now, and I formally came to the Quran at the age of 14, I would say. That's when I accepted it as my, my dogmatic axiom. Alhamdulillah. That's like around the same time I, that's like, like, what, 2016? 2015, 2016? Me, it might have been, like, 2013. Oh. Or, uh, 2015, 2015. Yeah, it's about the same time for me, 2015. 2015. Same time for me, 2015, I think July 15, 2015, that's when I truly submitted to God and his word alone and his way alone. That's when I truly, I said, y'all, I'm following God and his way alone. And nothing's going to stop me from that, man. I'm really loud, man. Yo, so what made you choose Islam as the way, like as the course? What, what, what caused you to choose Islam as the course, man? Well, for me, Ever since I was a kid, I've also always had a, a very philosophical bent to me. I've always asked philosophical, deep questions, and I've been inclined towards abstract thinking. And um, uh, I eventually, like, I studied a lot of philosophy, especially in my high school years. I would say from 14 to about 18, 19, I have a huge library of philosophy books, and I just dove deep into that. Mm -hmm. But And as I went through that, though, the Quran was always my axiom. It was always what I believed in. But as I studied secular philosophy, a lot of it, and the religions of the world, I... Um, my belief in the Quran was strengthened more and more. I started to realize that really mankind has not changed. The same ideas keep coming up over and over from history. And there's a fundamental nature within mankind that we cannot escape from. 
and I, I realize that there's not going to be some new intelligent philosopher guy who's just going to come and solve all these problems. No. What's worked in the past, what's worked in the beginning, is going to work now. Well, what, what's going to solve all of our problems, these ethical issues, moral dilemmas, and I realize that the only thing that has worked is the Word of God. I'll do the time, that. I always call it the time-tested and tremendous tradition. Yes. That's what the Quran calls itself, the tremendous tradition. Yes, it is. It definitely is the tremendous tradition, the way of Abraham. Man, alhamdulillah, man. You know, one of the, one of the things that I realized uh, as I've I, as I've grown up and as I've become an adult, uh, I had to come to the realization that everything that I was taught from my youth and my up my total upbringing and everything that I said, oh, this is my belief and this is what I believe, it just it just was mutt. It was trash. I like as I became older, I was like, this is trash. This is garbage. This is not working. You know what I mean? And and even following all the people that I thought that that had some type of knowledge, I just found myself going to hell with them and going through hell with them following them. And it's totally like all of it's destructive. And then when I just like, I didn't start truly having uplifting in my life until I fully submitted to Allah and to the, the word of Allah. That is when I started having true uplift in my life. That's when I started, uh, you know, being in the gym more. That's when I started, you know, started eating more health, start paying attention to what I'm doing, start paying attention to the world around me, how nature's working, and really paying attention to what people are doing, what people are really saying. And so it's just gotten to a point now where, you know, here in the United States, they're doing a, a, a alien disclosure thing. They started a whole uh, space, you know, Trump started a whole space branch of the, <laughs> the space yeah, a space branch of the uh the uh, uh what do they call it? They got the space. What is it? I forgot what they call now. What it is the space? Uh, it's a branch of the military though. It's an actual branch of the military. Some space, Some space bullshit, right? And I'm sitting there like, all right, <laughs> all right. So y'all gonna try to go out of space? And it's like, um, what what it always brings me back to. I I want to say it's uh, in Shore 55, but. Allah speaks to the people. He says, yo, if all the you and the jinn, y'all came together, y'all wouldn't be able to break into this, break into the, 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 the heavens without power, without absolute authority. And people say, well, it has authority from Allah, not actual power. Because when you do when you look up the word, it's power. It's, it's some type of force that you're going to need to get to break in there. And Allah says, yo, and when you do break into it, guess what? That's going to be the end of y'all. And so when you when we pay attention to the law of Allah, Allah sent us down on earth because of tests and due to our transgression against uh, his will, against his his law. And so due to our transgression against his law, we are here on earth, stuck here with the devils on earth until the time when Allah's like, all right, it's time. And so the people that are working as allies of the devils, and as I and this is my opinion, that are working as allies of the devils, they're trying to push this let's go out of space thing, you know? And if you pay attention, it was like a mass gathering of gold because gold is like the ultimate conductor of energy. It doesn't deplete. If you use copper, if you use aluminum, silver, any type of metals, it depletes, you know, saying the matter, like if you put enough power through it, it's going to deplete and break apart. But gold is the only conductor that will consistently run power through it at the highest, at, at the highest grade of the, the, the highest time you can make it happen, gold will still keep on rolling. You know what I mean? And so I, I really believe that them going from the gold standard, them taking up all the gold, the, the, the grabbing of all the gold has always been for this final goal, which is to go out of space. And that's why you see all the different countries. They're all working conglomerate, but acting like they're apart. But they're on the same thing. Like, we're trying to go out of space. And I think it's... I talked about this in the introduction to my book. Although the book is not completed, I'll have the introduction up. God willing, either tonight or tomorrow. I've been working on it vigorously, and I talk about that. How this lie, all the governments in the world, they're supposed to be autonomous and separate entities, but they can all agree on this one point that they're going to tell this particular lie to their citizens. Why? Because they're not separate. At some point, they consolidate at the top. Mm -hmm. Of course. At the top, at yep. the top of that capstone. At the top of that capstone, and then right there is a, a Blees's family, the tribes, his people, the, the descendants that are flesh and blood. They're all right there at that top. Bro, I believe that fully 100 percent man. So hey, look. So tell me, like, so tell like for me, myself personally, I do believe that in, in my opinion, I believe that it's all like for real. I believe that this we're in a vast expanse of water. And I believe that the earth has been raised out of the water and it's been like proportioned like at, at a certain like a distance that only Allah has measured. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Bible says. The land raised from the water. It's not like we had 
had this clump of mass of land that formed through gravity and then the water came on top of it. No, the land came from underneath the water. That's what the Bible said. Yep. And then Allah said, also said that he sent down the mountains and the stones to stabilize the, the place unless they would shift on you. Okay. Yeah. Stakes. Yeah, like there's stakes to keep it from stabilizing them. Even scientists have proved that the, the mountains, they stabilize the, the rest of the earth from shaking. They keep it from shaking. Scientists have proved this shit. So like scientists are proving what Allah said over 1700 years ago. So who are we gonna believe the scientists that are talking now or Allah 1700 years ago dropping that hawk? Well, who are we gonna believe? Are we gonna believe the natural philosophers and the scientists or are we gonna believe the one who created the heavens and the earth? Exactly. Knows everything about it. So, hey, all right. Where in the, in the Quran have you been able to formulate your, your opinions on, on the earth and like its structure and like even how you came up with your book, man? Like, I, I wanna know so I can, so the people can know like where they can find this information that in the book so they so so they don't have to sit there and try to ponder and look through all of this because because we know as muslims that we are only to follow a lot and what the laws revealed a lot of people a lot of people uh they claim that they're muslims but they follow everything that all these other people was revealed like oh yeah he said this and this guy said this and this guy said this and this guy said this and we i think that's all of them I think that's all. I think that's most of them, though. That's like most of the world's religions. You want they break into sects. They go from that unit unitarian form of Islam from the first uni, unitarian form of Islam, which is from Abraham and the children of Israel. Then it goes into Judaism. That's the new sect shit. And then it goes from um, unitarian Christianity, where everybody's following Christ in the way that Christ taught, which was follow Allah alone, pray, establish, you know, saying charity, prayer, you know, saying fight against tyranny, all that. They go with that. That's a unitarian concept. Then they go to a sectarian trinitarian concept where there's a father or son the holy spirit you got to die for this you got to get killed for this and all this shit and then with islam the quran, even says, the quran says that uh they'll say that abraham was a jew or abraham was a nazarene no say abraham was uh one of those inclining to truth and not of the idolaters he didn't belong to any sect he just submitted to the lord no alhamdulillah yeah and that is that's the absolute truth that's the true uh tradition of abraham the true tradition going back to adam, going back to adam and then what muhammad did was he brought back the tradition of abraham that's all he did that and that's every one of the prophets brought back and all of them did the same thing and that's what and, and that's what really at this point and at this juncture and at this day and age where we at is just like you come to that realization that that everyone is toiling toward hell except for the believers the ones that submit because the ones who submit and then they, they study they know that okay i have to do this and i need to operate in this form and this man i had to think like this i mean myself as a believer i realized truly that um i realized truly that my opinion doesn't matter my assumption what i think doesn't matter at all only what allah says because what allah says is the truth and it's absolute and if i was to follow my own assumptions or my own opinion Excuse me, hang on, it's ginger ale. If I was to follow my own assumptions and <laughs> if I was if I was to follow my own assumptions and opinions, I'm going straight to the fire. I'm running straight to the fire, head first. And I realize that, and I fear that. Like, with, so, so I, I stay off of what, what keeps you from going into your own to your own opinions and, and going all over. The, what, what keeps you from that? From from for falling victim to your own self because it's like yo you're young you're 20 years old bro and i i always thought you were like 35 when we first started i was like yo, he's like gotta be like 35 36 maybe 40. and then, and then you're like no nah, i'm 20 i'm like what i was I'm like yo what's going I'm like yo the thing that i guess that keeps me uh, on the tremendous tradition and the straight path is uh I didn't spend my years in high school wasting time. I didn't spend it on the sports team or masturbating or chasing after girls. I read a lot, a lot of books. And I just always, like I said, since I was a child, I wanted to know the truth. And as I chased after the truth, I studied a lot of philosophy. And I realized once again that humanity has not changed. The, the things that have worked in the past are going to work now. The things that have been profitable and beneficial for people in the ancient world, they'll work now. I'm not... I'm not swayed by these new ideas, quote unquote, new ideas that people come up with. And I think that background and studying lots of philosophy, that's what really keeps me rooted. I know this world is full of deception and the word of God is all you can trust. I've seen it. I've seen it. All the philosophy of this world, Platonism, Neoplatonism, all this stuff, these like, it's just vanity. Mm -hmm. It's vanity and it leads to nowhere. 
Yeah, that most definitely. It's all, it's all good insofar as it copies from the Word of God, but the Word of God is the ultimate pure truth. All right. Hey, so so, what's the reason behind the flat Earth manifesto, man? I want to know the reason behind that. Because me, I, I'm I've come to a place as a Muslim, but I don't even care if I t explain it. Like you know, I'm like, if you don't know, you don't know, and really, I can't help you. And that's how I look at it now. Like, what would it cause you to want to like write this Flat book? Earth, uh, I guess it was born out of my desire to show mankind the true nature of creation. Because I know in the Quran, you know, Allah says for us to use our eyes, for us to use our ears. And I was reading it um, a few days ago. The Quran says that contemplate on the heavens and the earth. That means the heavens and the earth, they can give us signs. They can tell us a lot about the place we're in and also the God that has created it. That's why Allah tells us to keep our eyes open. And you know, NASA will tell you different. They say, you know, don't look up in the sky. Just distrust what we say. But Allah tells us to reflect. And I want people to understand the true nature of creation because that will lead. I think that's the most powerful witnessing tool to lead them back to their God. In the end, we know that God is the one who guides, but this is one of the most powerful tools in the modern world, I think. This truth that has come up, it's so powerful. It shows that all these beautiful, amazing scientists with their lab coats and their technology and their supposed expertise and degrees, that they were wrong in these ancient holy books from uh, these quote-unquote desert-dwelling sheep herders, that they were right. The scientists with the lab coats were wrong and the holy books were right. Alhamdulillah. That's why it's so important to me to get this out. I want every man, woman, and child to hear about this truth. It's powerful. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I want, I want them to hear about this truth as well. And that's why I'm reading the book. The, the, uh, I've read in the Quran where it says the, the, uh, like the day and the night are swimming. They like swimming. Circuit swimming. Yeah, they're in a circuit swimming. And I've seen also like in observation, like observation laboratory, like photos like sped up, like day and night of uh, day and night and how it's going. And it's going it's it's a circular motion. The stars, they're going in a circular motion above it. It's not like they're going in like a like a, a folded motion, like they're going past like this. It's like they're going in a full circle. Like if you're looking directly up, they're just doing a full circle. It's not going in a it's not going in some even just forget forget the fact that it's a circle, just the fact that it's moving at all. When you, I mean, flat Earth, it completely lines up with our sense and experience. And like I said, you know, God tells us to use our eyes and our ears to reflect. When you look in the night sky, you can see the stars moving mm -hmm. as the night goes on. When you look in the day, you can see the sun moving across. Clearly, it's the sun that's moving that's smaller than the Earth. Mm -hmm. The Earth beneath it is not moving, it's fixed. Mm -hmm. Everything lines up with our reality. God is not trying to confuse us. It's the Satan's that trying to confuse us. Exactly, exactly. With his deception and his cartoons and his CGI images, he tries to fool you and trick you. God has made things plain and clear. I'm just uh, to see and ears to hear. Boy, <laughs> hey man, look here, man. <laughs> look here, man. Hey man. So when you when the book dropping, man? So when you gonna drop the book? When when's the book dropping? Things might come my way and slow down the process, but I would like to have it out by the end of this year. I have all the material saved onto a hard drive. Now it's just I need to collate it into a, a complete book. That's it. And you got a YouTube the process should be fairly smooth. You got a YouTube channel that you you got a YouTube channel that you're doing a lot of explanation on, right? Uh you're doing yes. a lot of okay, uh and that's our eyes wide open one four five at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Eyes wide open. Okay. That's my channel. EWO and Green, green eyes, eyes wide open. Started it, but the content is regular. Every few days, I'm uploading a video. I hum do you Just do casual talks, or I'll comment on Quranic scriptures while in my car, like this is the angle you guys have seen me at while I'm driving around, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where we're going. And recently, or maybe either tonight or tomorrow, inshallah, I will put out the introduction to my book. I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with you on that. I'm with you 100. percent I'll be like waiting to spend eyes wide open 145 at gmail.com. I W O green letters. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. E W O E W O green letters. Y'all make sure you check that out. That's that's a real Muslim over there. That's a real Muslim over there. That's one of the last Muslims that's out here. Believe that, man. Look here, man. It's good to have you up here, man. It's good to have you on the show. It's good to have you on the interview, man. Man, yo. I know the, the doctrines in your heart. You are dedicated. You're, 
I don't do the lie, man. I don't do the lie. No, it's not a joke, man. It, like myself personally, like I'm I'm like you. I've always leaned toward the truth, regardless of what, like whether it would hurt me, whether whatever it was, I just wanted the truth. And I remember it was 2007. I was like in a cell. I was uh I was incarcerated after I had told the truth, you know, and like my mom and dad said, if you tell the truth, everything will go the way you wanted to go. You know what I'm saying? I go and tell the truth and got my ass hit up for that shit, like really bad. And I found the injustice in the system. And once I found that injustice, I never believed in the system again. And not believe and not believing in the system, I remember crying to Allah, asking him, I just need to know the truth because I don't know nothing. And I'm just well, lost out here. It takes something personal to really yeah. learn what the system's about, who's behind it. Yeah. It takes a personal punch in the gut. Oh yeah, most definitely. But after that, like I that from from 2007 on to 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 this day and age right here, I've always been about the truth and and like about the truth alone. And as long as I knew the truth, I was able to operate in the right manner. And man, I'm grateful to be surrounded by other brothers and sisters that are really for the truth and the truth alone, and that really stand on the truth and the truth alone. And yo, indeed, we are a family joined together. Through, through faith by Allah. Allah is like joined us together. Never will we ever become a community like this unless Even without the Allah. Believers we haven't met, we already know them and they know us because our hearts are similar. And they know what, and they know what we're saying. They know what we're saying. It's the truth. It caused their skin to shrivel and their hair to raise because they know it's coming from Allah, man. Alhamdulillah, man. I'm grateful to have you on the show, man. And you know it's a rap. I always love talking to you, man. Yo, it's definitely a rap. Yo, uh you got anything else you want to say before we before we get out of here? Yeah, I'd actually like to leave the audience with some scriptures from the Quran, which will show them that the earth is flat and stationary, or that the the model of the universe, the universe, quote unquote, although I don't really like that word, mm. described by NASA is absolutely incompatible with the word of God. Give it to me, brother. Give it to us. Give it to us. I won't, I, I won't read every single verse because it might take some time, but I'll, I'll leave them with some references. All right. So we begin with uh, Surah 2, verse 22. It describes the earth as a carpet and the sky as structure. And a carpet, as we know, it's something flat that's rolled out. It's not a ball of any kind. And always, if you look in the Quran, it describes the sky as something solid, a hardened structure, like a case over the earth. Mm -hmm. It's not this endless expanse that just keeps going on forever and ever. It is a, a hardened structure. Mm -hmm. It is a protective, it's a firmament. And the Bible describes the same thing. You can read it in Genesis. God talks about how he, he separated the waters from the water. Waters, the waters above the firmament from the waters below the firmament, yep. the seas. So the sky is something solid in the Quran. This Quran talks about in um, uh, again in Surah seven verse forty, gates of the sky that there are doors, there are mm -hmm. layers to the heavens. Mm -hmm. In Surah seventeen verse ninety two, it talks about the sky falling in pieces once again because it's a hardened structure. The in uh, Surah twenty five verse sixty one, the Quran talks about the moon as a light. And the, the modern assertion about the moon is that it's reflected light from, from the sun, mm. which is just foolishness to put on. It says that the moon has a light. And the word, I believe, is nur in Arabic. It gives off its own light. It emanates its own light. It's not reflecting anything. It's not a mirror. Mm -hmm. So that I'm um, incompatible with what NASA says. We also have um, Allah says in uh, verse, uh, Surah 29, verse 22, he says that you cannot escape in the earth or in the sky. And remember, NASA is claiming that they went to the moon, that they escaped the earth. And God is telling you, you can't get out of here. We're stuck here until God allows us to. Which one is that one? So, Surah 29, verse 22. All right. And Surah 50, verse 6, God says that there are no gaps in the sky, completely at odds with, once, once again, what the modern world says. The modern world says the sky is just one big gap. And Allah says there are no gaps at all. So that's Surah 50, verse 6. Surah 88, verses 17 through 20, talks about how the earth is spread out. Once again, its flatness is described. And yeah, the, the Quran also says that in Surah 2, verse 255, that Allah's throne overspreads the earth. Once again, this is a flat structure. And uh, you have the heavens above, which, are the, which is the dome and the layers of the heavens. And above that, God literally sits on his throne and watches down over earth. That is what the Quran describes. He's like a holy... A majestic king that watches over all of the affairs that happen on earth and everything he's in between when allah says that he sends down angels they're coming from above below god's throne is that way it's upwards hey because he said and he also says in the so in the quran that he raised the throne from he, he raised his throne from the wall all the way to the highest firmament he raised it himself the waters. Which waters? The waters of the sea? 
No. The water's that way. Hey, you know what's crazy? One of my sons, my middle son, D'Artagnan, I remember he looked up in the sky and, he, and it was clear blue sky. And he looked up and he says, water. And I was like, yo, you think so? Gotta, and, that, that's amazing. I got to tell you something my wife said. So she, uh, she believes, obviously, they're at this flat. Otherwise, well, and she has to because that, that's what the word of God teaches. And she said that uh, modern science explains the sky being blue. It says that it's a reflection of the ocean waters that are below. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, why is the sky blue in the desert where there's no water at all? I'm like, this Duh. is why I made you my wife. Like, this is perfect right there. Yeah. Yeah, cause it, it wouldn't be like that. Yeah. Clearly, there are waters above us. Of course. You know, we... we um. Do you think anything's missing out of Quran? Because a lot of people, they like to think that, oh, they, they think that, oh, I've heard like these people, these people that claim that they're Muslims, these, these people with their like Sunna and their Hadith, they, they claim that, oh, you can never know any, you you won't know the Quran unless you know this, unless you know that. Do you think anything's missing? Oh, you don't know nothing unless you know this and know that. Do you think anything well, is missing from the Quran? I would return that jab to those people by asking them. Do you believe the clear statements in the Quran where it says it's clear and complete and Allah left out nothing, that it's fully detailed? But do you believe that or not? If the Quran is fully detailed and complete, which God claims it is, then you don't need anything else. You don't need sunnah. You don't need hadith. It is purely enough to understand the world around you and your purpose and why you're here. And if you don't believe that, then you're going to start including hadith. Alhamdulillah. Ask them, do you really believe the word of God when it says that? I don't think they really believe in Allah like that. I don't. I really don't think they believe in Allah, the last day, and anything like that. And that's why they have to add on all the different things that they do add on. I truly believe that. Because if they really believe in Allah and the last day and the message that Allah sent down, they will be completely comfortable with the Quran. Like, I'm so comfortable with the Quran being the book and being the final message that I have, like, in my life, I've... I dismiss every other thing that people try to throw at me. Like, I, I just like, nah, that ain't in the, if it don't align up with what I've been taught from Allah. I like the word you said, uncomfortable. They're very uncomfortable with just following the word of God alone. They need their traditions and their school of thoughts and their madhabs and their hadith and all this stuff. I don't know why, but it just makes them uncomfortable to follow the word of God alone. Mm -hmm. And this goes for many things, not just a hadith. It even goes back to the flat earth because a lot of people, I know especially in the Muslim world, they like to strain the Quran through modern science. They like to make it conform to it. They start with the, science, the findings of modern science and they conform the Quran to that. Mm -hmm. And once again, the true believers, you will recognize them by their mark. And their mark is that they believe in the word of God, the straight, face-first, literal interpretation. Mm -hmm. Because God's not trying to confuse anyone. What it says is what it is. When Allah says the sky is structured and there are waters above, it means the sky is hard and that there's waters above. Yeah. The face-first, literal interpretation, not this esoteric, metaphoric stuff. Yeah, you know, that's the whole thing. Like you, uh, like you were just saying, you know, they... They want the word of Allah to conform to their science. And the thing is, their science has to conform to the word of Allah. That's what makes their science absolute. And, and that's what I realized. And so when I hear a doctor saying any bullshit conspiracy, like about COVID-19 or about, uh, you know what I'm saying, their, their little fucking theories that they got going on. Oh, everybody's going to get it. And you like, bro, you don't have no control over death. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have no control over death, no control over life. You know, it's that that's all in control of Allah. And and Allah gives sickness and Allah gives health. Exactly. That's what I know. Exactly. And that's and that's what he does. And so when people people make up all this different shit and try to conform to whatever society standards, I think at the end of the day, they only hurting themselves. You know what I'm saying? They only they only hurting and destroying themselves because they're committing shirk when they're adding to Allah's word, whether they call themselves a Muslim, then they're adding to what the scientists and said. Well, scientists say, fuck the scientists. What Allah say? You know what I mean? Shirk is not just bowing down to a stone or putting a nah. No, it's putting things at a higher authority than the word of God. That is shirk. Anything. Whatever you put as the highest axiom that you follow in your life, that is your God and you worship it. Man, I'm the love, bro. Yo. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's saying stuff like that. I'm glad you can express it in a more articulate manner than me. Indeed, I do have the rough pirate mouth. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yo, we gotta have you. Hey, yo, yo, we gotta have you back on here, man. We gotta, we gotta bring you back on it. We gotta bring you back on the show, man. Inshallah, man. Yo, we gotta bring you back on here soon, man. We got more, more topics to discuss than flat Earth, man. We got a lot of things to break down, a lot of stuff to, to drop, man. So, 
Oh, we gonna go deep, man. It's the last Muslim man. I got Waleed Naeem in the building. Eyes wide open. One four five at gmail dot com. I W O the green letter one. That's us. Not damn. My bad. E W O not I W E W O. Hey yo, it's a wrap. Salam alaikum to all you guys, fam. Yo, you got any last words for the brothers and sisters? Mm, I just want to say that praise goes to God alone. I'm doing that. Me and bless conversation with you. Praise goes to Allah. Man, alhamdulillah, yo. Hey, look here, man. We are definitely signing out. Hey, yo, shout out to all you people that came on the uh, podcast that decided to look at it. Oh, my little one viewer, cool. That works out for me. I don't care. Hey, look, we definitely gonna get it on the popping, man. Hey, brother, it's good to see you, man. Hey, I'm ending this. Uh, the the I'm ending the I'm ending the podcast. <laughs>